So you have a specific question you'd like to ask about the oh, uh, the Christian yes, like yeah, the yeah, Christian uh, Church as it kind of has experience. Yeah. How how did uh, how did Paul's experience uh, of meeting him? You know, how did that transform into his uh, to, to Paul's experience? Well, maybe not. It doesn't <coughs> isn't significant, but it is. Oh, see what you have I am returned to continue. Your question is a valid one, everyone, and we'll have that question, and so we will speak to the idea of the early church. As I said, I was causing a lot of trouble in those times and places, intentionally so, fearlessly so. I was not pulling any punches. I had a limited time in which to transmit the information that I was being told to transmit. Now, you must understand that I was being given information in a similar form as this channel is being given information. I was being given information at times silently downloaded into my conscious mind. At other times I would speak in a form such as this is happening uh, for higher consciousness, let us say. We will not get into specifics of who was teaching me. We are dealing with enough complications here. To uh, let your mind get uh, confused is not our purpose. Our purpose is to retell the story of what happened. And so <clears throat> the charisma and the power with which I was delivering this message was causing havoc. When I would come into a town, for example, there would be no work done that day. There would be, at times, thousands of beings come to hear me speak. I was not, as I said, pulling any punches. I was delivering the information with all the energy and passion at my command intentionally to disrupt the system. You feel this in your society now. The system needs to be disrupted and that is why I am back. That is what I do. I am a system buster, if you will. That is a phrase that has been used before. Uh, there are beings who do this work repeatedly. Remember, this is a place of separation. There must be a repeated attempt to bring the mind to awakening. And it is through dramatic events. Your society is at times what appears to be victimized by dramatic events. But these events are brought to you to wake you up. You are unconscious in this uh, society, being more deeply and deeply indoctrinated into unconsciousness. Spirit must bring ideas through to help you wake up. You have come here voluntarily, remember. You have stepped into separation voluntarily. And so the unseparated mind, the mind that knows the truth, will bring messages through to you in whatever form will work. We do not care. We do not uh, value life, body life, the way you do. We know that your body is not who you are. It is a demonstration of separation. We do not value it the way you do. So when we use death, for example, catastrophic death, dramatic ways of dying, these decisions are made in spirit where the knowledge of what the body is, is truly and profoundly comprehended. This, uh, you must keep this in mind when you observe disasters, when you observe death, that these beings that are dying, first of all, are dying because they are unconscious. You do not have to die. This is the story of immortality. We will go into this uh, in subsequent weeks. But your belief in death is what causes your experience of death. It is not a mandatory process. You can train the mind. You can train your vibration to such a level that you no longer have to go through that experience. You can just leave your body whenever you choose. You can rejuvenate the body whenever you choose. This process that you are experiencing here is a very low level consciousness experience, deeply immersed in the ego mind, deeply immersed in the value of the body. And so these teachings that were coming through into a society that was as uh, ignorant of those things, 
uh, even more so at times, but you have your own suspicions here. These are uh, superstitions, we would say, that is the correct word. Superstitions that have been nurtured in your society and fed in your society. That is why when you begin to talk about the subject of Jesus channeling, Christ channeling, that you will see fear arise in the faces of those beings that you are communicating to because these are deeply indoctrinated beliefs in your society. And so this experience was what was transpiring on the earth plane when I was incarnated. There was a great deal of energy being felt when I was teaching. Beings were feeling it. They were being healed. They were uh, overriding their conditioned mind because there were demonstrations that had more power and influence. The miracle working, the healing was happening because I had direct contact with high vibration energies that could override low vibration energies. That is all that was happening when I was healing people. I had a direct connection to truth and truth is health. Truth is immortality. That is what allowed resurrection to happen. These are very simple principles. Untruth is limitation, death, fear. Truth is unlimited abundance, health, immortality. These are the two choices that you have in your thinking processes every single day that you experience your own consciousness. That is what you are doing. You are experiencing your own consciousness. So if your life is difficult, you must look at what you are doing internally in your thought processes that are bringing these experiences to you. And so at the end of my experience, there was a momentum of energy around my teachings that was visceral, that was uh, very, very powerful. And the structures that existed at the time, the structures that played a part in my apparent death, used that energy. They took that energy. They had my complete teachings. They had access to my complete teachings, but they knew that if they allowed those teachings to continue in their complete form, that they would not be able to control people because I was teaching people how to stop being controlled. That was what I was doing. And so very, very quickly, those powers that be, religious and political, decided to use the energy that I had generated in my ministry as a springboard to more power and influence they took my teachings and only allowed certain ones to be uh, kept alive, so to speak. They kept alive the ones that would work in their favor. They destroyed the ones that would not work in their favor. Any messages about uh, self-empowerment were deleted. Any messages about sexuality and tantra and that energy were deleted. Any uh, and any teachings that empowered women were deleted. These were old patriarchal, controlling, repressive structures that could not tolerate those teachings being shared. And so they took it upon themselves to edit and produce material that could be distributed using the energy that I had generated during my ministry. And so that is what they did. They began to use what I had started to further their own political and religious aspirations. This was not a problem for me at the time. My experience was my experience. I was having a consciousness experience that was personal and visceral and uh, ecstatic. These consequences are just the ego mind, the separated mind's way of maintaining itself. That is what it does. The separated mind wants to be separated. That is the vibration of this earthly plane. Beings come in all the time from non-physical, <clears throat> manifesting into lives, manifesting into experiences that are designed to bring truth through in an effort to wake you up. And they continue. They are endless. They are innumerable. They have happened throughout your apparent history. And I say the word apparent because your history is not as you have been taught. It is not the truth. You have had a very selective history brought forward in an effort to continue that suppression of self-empowerment. 
So you cannot look at your history clearly because you have been taught that it is true when it is not. You have been taught lies when they are... Uh, you have been taught that lies are true. And so when the truth comes to a mind that has been pervasively uh, infected with lies, the truth will appear to be a lie. The truth will make you uncomfortable. The truth will seem to be difficult. Because the mind is full of untruth. And this is why we are recommending the book, A Course in Miracles, because this is a mind training program. So the early stages of the church were a training program to continue repression, to continue fear, to continue control. And they used <clears throat> whatever means they had at hand to do that. My association with the Christian church is a precarious one. I am not supporting the structures, the teachings, the cruelty, the repression, the judgment, the narrowness, the sexism. These are not things that I taught. I taught the opposite of those things. But I'm not attached to the world. The world is a dream world. It is a world that takes place in your mind. It is a world of fear and separation. I do not believe in the world. I have left the world, but I am come again and continue, have continued to teach throughout your timeline in many different places, in many different forms, in many different what you call countries. At times I teach in places where they have no idea who I am and so I relax and uh, share my wisdom with beings on a one-to-one -one basis sitting around a fire at night in a rural environment. They do not know who I am. They do not see the body that you see when you think of Jesus. They see uh, the body that I bring forth that suits the circumstances. I am not limited to the physical structure that you imagine I am because the body is not real. Your body is not real. It is an imagined concept in your mind. But because your mind is deluded, because your mind is confused, because your mind is untrained, you are unable to see the truth of that. But as you continue your education, as you begin to understand your mind, your emotional guidance system, these kinds of things, you will have a different experience of your body and you will stop being so attached to it. And so we will say to you that the experiences that you are having are perfect. You are here listening to these stories. You are being told to read certain books, to practice certain principles. You have a choice whether or not to do that or not. We will say to you, if you are surviving in a way that you like if you are at peace if you are enjoying your life then do not worry about it if you do not want to change anything keep doing what you are doing we are not here to force your hand we are not here to insist on anything all we are doing is offering you the means to waking up all we are doing is offering the means to reduce the suffering in your body mind it is your choice you are the creator there is no one forcing you to do anything. There is nothing being done to you. You are doing it to yourself as I was doing it to myself. I had the experience of being an ordinary human in, a, in an ordinary body with desires and hungers and fears, just as you do, needs, apparent needs. But I was gifted with a connection to non-physical that prevented me from remaining in the world. And I was given the task of teaching that material. And I continue to do that work. I have always done that work. This is merely one aspect of my work. Do not mistake this as the only place that this is happening. This material is being brought through many, many different, in, in many, many different locations on this plane at this time. Because it is time now to shift the consciousness on a mass level. Why? Because you are seeing the consequences of the ego mind given full reign. You see what it is doing. You see the suffering. You feel the confusion. And you understand that the 
pendulum must begin to swing the other way or you will not be able to continue your physical experience here because the physical experience that you are creating with the fears, with the ego mind is not sustainable. It is not sustainable because you are taking power from a place that is limited in power. Your true power is connection to the divine. Your true power is understanding what you are, where you are, and how to function here. That is how you will maintain yourself beyond this small physical incarnation limited body concept that, that you find yourselves in. You can expand your consciousness and therefore expand your experience to realms that you are not at this level able to comprehend. That is all I did. I was given direct and unequivocal knowledge that I put into practice that had direct and measurable consequences. And it is a science. If you do these practices of forgiveness... If you stop judgment, if you turn to love whenever you have the opportunity in thought, word or deed, you will begin to shift your consciousness from fear and separation to unity consciousness. It is a science. It is not a dispensation from a God who is patting you on the head for being good. That is not what is happening here. The consequences of practicing these techniques is peace. Peace is the state that your mind must be in to receive knowledge. As long as there is resistance in the form of judgment and fear, knowledge which is of a high vibration cannot get into the mind because you are not focused on love. You have turned away from love and in fact are accusing God of abandoning you. The truth is you have abandoned that which you call love and it is your responsibility to turn towards love through the practice of forgiveness. Why forgiveness? Forgiveness is a demonstration of your understanding of this science. That you are not separate, that you are experiencing your own consciousness and that the consciousness of the ego is low and judgment filled, separation inducing and that higher consciousness, love, oneness, is based on unity consciousness and forgiveness demonstrates your understanding of these two basic principles. So when you forgive somebody, you are demonstrating your understanding of a truth and so you will begin to experience more truth. When you attack someone, yourself or somebody else, you are demonstrating your ignorance. You are demonstrating your lack of understanding. And so you lower yourself into the realms of ignorance, which is where suffering takes place. It is very simple. But we must deconstruct your society's ideas about what and who I am and why I was on the earth plane, what has happened to me and how this affects the consciousness of your society. The teachings have continued throughout the timeline that you see as your history. I am able to manifest physically. I do not do it in this particular time place because of the danger of your current system. You feel it when you venture into this realm. You feel it when you imagine doing this job that this channel is doing. And yet this is the job that she has accepted as her purpose on this journey this time around. It's not the first time, as we have said. But to manifest in a physical structure and say that I am that being would be very short-lived in your society at this time. There is no tolerance for it in that form. There is tolerance for it in this form. There is a need to see consciousness manifesting in a different way, this helps the mind expand. It helps the mind shift into a place of, ah, there is something else going on here. 
this being, this ordinary body mind does not speak this way. This ordinary body mind does not have access to this information in this form. And so when you witness this experience, your mind expands. We will use whatever devices we can to expand the mind into new realms. We do many, many different things on this plane to help you expand your mind. But we must do it in a way that allows you to maintain a stability in the mind that does not induce psychotic breaks, that does not induce fear to such a degree that you become paralyzed by it. Even inducing a little bit of fear does not serve the purpose of learning. The mind shuts down, the body wants to run, you want to protect yourself. This is what we avoid at all costs. And so you can see that we are limited at times in what we can do to induce awakening. And this is where sometimes drastic events will be used to get your attention, to get you out of unconsciousness, to get you out of your routines, to get you out of your fears, to see a bigger picture for just a moment. When you see group deaths, for example, you will in that moment begin to appreciate your life. You may be not appreciating your life. You may not be appreciating your loved ones. You may not be appreciating your experience. But when you see a mass, what you can consider catastrophe, you will for a moment look up from your unconsciousness and feel gratitude for your life. In those moments, we are able to connect with you more fully. Now, this may seem a drastic and... Uh, a perhaps unfortunate way of getting your attention, but these beings that choose to leave early have done this fully, uh, are, are complicit in this technique. Before you are born, you decide when you will leave. Before you are born, you will decide what you want to do, the experiences you want to have, and you will place yourself at a time, place, family, body that will suit that experience. It is not accidental. It is not a random world. It is full of planning. It is full of intention. It is full of synchronicity in an effort to wake you up. When you see synchronous events, understand that that is us giving you an opportunity to wake up. So pay attention, look at the message that is contained within synchronicities. These are ways that we speak to you. We speak to you in dreams, we speak to you in feeling, we speak to you in creativity. So we want you to begin to delve into those areas. We want you to get out of the intellect. We want you to get out of words, despite the fact that, yes, we are using a lot of words here. That is a method that we use to communicate. But for many of you, you use far too many useless words, talk about far too many useless things, and could use your time and focus and creativity a lot better. You could bring into manifestation inspirational material. You can bring into manifestation images and ideas that will assist other beings in their waking up. And so we would say to you, if you are a creative being, if you have ideas, get to work and to bring them into manifestation to help inspire your fellow brothers and sisters to their waking process. You are all here to do that. That is the only real work you have. Anything else you do is incidental. We will take a break. <laughs> <laughs>